What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am Mace, and welcome to the show. Let's get to it right away. This is a first for my channel. Today, we're checking out a rap battle on Flip Top, which is a Filipino rap battle platform. And this particular battle is between a rapper called Looney, who's a Filipino rapper. He's cool. I've uh, reacted to quite a few of his tracks. He's definitely um, a skilled MC who's got, you know, multi-syllable rhymes, punchlines. He's got all of it. Uh, and he is against Mark Grist. Totally new. Don't know who Mark Grist is. Um, but I skipped just to the part where they're about to start the rap battle. Um... Battle rap is an interesting thing, man. It's a part of hip hop, but it's not something that is as popular, obviously, as, you know, mainstream rap and stuff that you're going to hear on the radio, that type of hip hop that appeals to the masses. Uh, battle rap is a whole different animal. Some people might know, you know, the most famous scene from 8 Mile, where Eminem, uh, you know, he's in the battle rap at the end of the, sh at, at the, end of the movie and he, he just rips apart all of his adversaries just piece by piece and uh, section by section he takes them down with skill and uh, talent it doesn't matter what you look like right it's all about the rhymes and the bars and uh, battle rap such as this this particular type of platform man you got to give them props because it's not easy to rhyme words like that on the spot have the right amount of braggadocio the right amount of intellect the the right amount of skill to put these rhymes and the punchlines, it's all about punchlines. It's about just boxing. It's like a boxing match with punchlines, pun intended. Um, and they exchange those those uh, uppercuts, you know, those jabs, those hooks. They exchange those for the entire fight. So this is going to be interesting, man. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to check it out. My only battle rap experience uh, ever watching it is something called King of the Dot in, here in Canada, which is a very popular sort of similar type of platform where you have two MCs, two battle rappers go at each other and on camera, you know, in front of a crowd. So let's get to it. I'm excited. All the way from Peterborough, UK. Make some noise for Mark Rist. All right. So Mark Rist is from Peterborough, UK. I don't know what, what rep and don't flop, what exactly that <laughs> signifies, but he's an uh, English rapper. The Philippines represent. Make some noise for Looney. Looney. So I'm interested to see. Is Looney going to rap um, in Looney English? Looney won the coin toss. He picked Mark Rist to go first. Let's hear this shit, man. First round, Mark Rist. Yeah. So yeah, and they go in rounds. Here's round one, Mark Grist. Let's see what he's got to say. See what, see what he's bringing. Flip top, Kamusta! Kamusta. Prepping for this match was torture. Eric, I can't thank you more. You took me on a massive tour. This land is gorgeous. He even shared his battle formula. The way you prep is mad important. Pegasus, Air Force One, and Happy Sauna. I was nervous, right. but they were very nice. They said he goes there every night. <laughs> and now this punk is what he gets me. Just some bum who thinks he's destined to be worshipped for his earnings, mate. Your money don't impress me. I'll punch you in a frenzy till I'm rupturing your belly. Pull your guts out, hang intestines from the rafters and the belfry. I'll drink your blood like it was sherry. Crush your nuts into confetti. Then I'll ring your girl and yell, we've saved a bunch upon our wedding. It's... <laughs> I'll call your girl and tell her that we've saved a bunch upon our wedding. Your girl, in fact. And we're decorating the place with your viscera. <laughs> It's gonna get real messy, butter knife v machete. This puppy's blood will spurt, but first, I'd love to get a selfie. Would that be all right? <laughs> it's very nice, son. <laughs> Thank you. See, for a while now, I've been trying to take a bunch of shots to illustrate the lowest ebbs of human nature. Sober things. <laughs> Sober things, sober things that make me think I'm lucky. Life's okay, yeah? You know, like a dog that's lost its tail, or a guy who's missed the train, or a bunch of guys I've met who've been sleeping rough for days without one picture of your face? 
That is proper fucking failure. I mean, that other stuff is really bad, but that could be my screensaver. I mean, no one would fall in love with this. You look like a deflated puffer fish. What? Okay. One eye closed, shite closed, hair on your chin that's like a goat's, nostrils so far apart they each have their own time zones. Oh. I mean, those are wide. I bet when you picked it, you weren't all that subtle. Did you dig the finger in right up to the knuckle? Did you lift it and spin it? Did you get your whole fist in? Did you hammer in both like some pneumatic pistons? Whenever you sniff, does the furniture drift in? I heard, I heard it sucked up his grandma when she... When you sniff coke, does the furniture drift in from the... Your, your nose is a vacuum for drugs. And, and your nostrils are really wide as well. She lent in to kiss him. When you're out on a mission, if the wind starts to pick in, does it fill up with dogs and cats and pigeons? I heard at weekends, if he's got a spare hour to fit in, he likes to install the odd art exhibition. It's a wide nose. Plus... <laughs> That cap and shaved head are quite scary, you know, but I'd shave my hair too if my hair didn't grow. I mean, come on. Don't be surprised that cap's there because he needs it. We all know the truth. Your hairline's receding. If he took that thing off, if he took that thing off, you could see it retreating. I guess it's not just Sony Records that wants to up and leave him. And no, don't listen to them. You don't need no cosmetics. You're like a one-man Filipino Venice, just with the nostrils of an evil ferret and the hairline of Magneto's helmet. Oh, Time! <laughs> so Mark Riss basically went after Looney's looks, his uh, lack of hair on top, saying that he shaved his head because uh, he has no hair, and I would shave my head too, uh, Mark Riss says. If I had no hair, your hairline's receding. Sony Records abandoned you, and uh, you're ugly, basically, was his shots. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see what Looney comes with, because his delivery was really good, Mark Grist, but he, 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 I mean, he didn't really say much. <laughs> Rhyme schemes and delivery were there, but... Time? What do you... Make some noise! <laughs> Make some noise! You're a battle rapping teacher, according to the pamphlets. But no one's looking forward to your matches because they're as boring as your classes. <laughs> You're a battle rapping teacher, but nobody's looking forward to your classes because they're as boring. Uh. He likes to call himself a metaphorical assassin. Bro, you're such an adorable faggot. <laughs> I should say- 2020, Looney. Oracle assassin, bro, you're such an adorable faggot. <laughs> I should send this foreigner's body to the corner after using his four-wheeler bag as a portable casket. You're a full-time teacher, right? <laughs> Fly-by rapper. You can't kick it with me, Grist. I'm a Muay Thai master. The type to body bag you and give you a high five after, especially if you're asking for it. Like the Wi-Fi password. <laughs> Now you really think that you Gotta get those Wi-Fi passwords, man. That was a nice scheme, though. That was a nice scheme. I enjoyed it. Looney. Looney's coming in tough here, man. The type to body bag you and give you a high five after, especially if you're asking for it. Like the Wi-Fi password. <laughs> now you really think that you can win here with your nice guy swagger? Nice mm. try, cracker. <laughs> You should have worn that suit and tie designed with a tie-dye pattern and a t-shirt inside that says, White Lives Matter. I hope you fucking die of cancer, you liney bastard. <laughs> Listen. I hope you die of cancer, you liney bastard. That's tough. That's harsh. That's harsh. I hope you- Looney's coming for blood. <laughs> White Lives Matter. I hope you fucking die of cancer, you liney bastard. <laughs> Listen here, you little British prick. Fuck your fish and chips. <laughs> Listen here, you British prick. Fuck your fish and chips. The uh, famous British meal.
The Brits don't really have the greatest food. Near you little British prick. Fuck your fish and chips. <laughs> Over here in the Philippines, we got fish and chips. <laughs> now what you know about that? Some longanisa. Little bit of pancit. Mmm. Little fried fish. With some chips. Hell yeah. <laughs> Over here in the Philippines, we got fish and, and chips. <laughs> now, what you know about that motherfucking deal is crisps. <laughs> Yo. So, yeah, rap battles are basically about who's the most clever and fierce. Clever and fierce with the punchlines. Last time I was in London, I tried ordering my lunch in. <clears throat> Sausages, muffins, porridge with some crumpets. The food was borderline disgusting. And for the record, most of your women are either oversized or ugly. And I bet you bloody wankers don't even have the bollocks to colonize this country. Them Brits, they, they did colonize, colonize a lot of places. It's facts are either oversized or ugly. And I bet you bloody wankers don't even have the bollocks to colonize this country. In it, bro. Man, Looney, Looney's winning this fight, in my opinion. It's bruv, in it, bro. <laughs> now, even if I lose, I consider this shit grist for the mill. But he just came here for my views. It's literally grist for the mill. So I guess that a million is cool for this British buffoon and his illiterate students sitting in school. But listen up, dude. You know how this battle gets triple the views? I don't mean to be a bit of a douche, but get on the ground right now and start kissing my shoes. Time. That was hard. Come on. Mugga guy! Yeah, you are more famous. You're a celebrity, dude. You saved Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. And you said London. <laughs> Short round. <laughs> uh, yeah, you are more famous. You're a celebrity, dude. You saved Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. And you said London. That's not where I live. I bet you think your girl's G-spot's on her left eyelid. <laughs> I just battled protege. You should know your fucking place. I'll beat you back to back to back like Joe did Drake. And you know it, mate. You should be protege's protege. Joe Budden and Drake? Is that what he's talking about? Yeah, facts. Where I live. I bet you think your girl's G-spot's on her left eyelid. <laughs> I just battled protege. You should know your Pla fucking place. place. I'll beat you back to back to okay. back like Joe did Drake. And you know it, mate. You should be protege's protege. And you think that... That was nice. You should be protege's protege. I don't know protege, the rapper, but... Grist is coming harder than his first time. And you know it, mate. You should be protege's protege. And you think that... And you think the crowd chanting your name is something I fear, bro? Nah, Jose Vizel was a real fucking hero and he'd hate the kind of writer you are. The king of rhyme, he said online in the star, I can rhyme with anything, my rhyming's so sharp. Like I could rhyme whole bottle. And my, when you start, I got whole bottle. I got role model. I got throttle. I got wobble wobble. <laughs> Oh, the majesty, the gravity. I'm amazed, I'm in awe. Such rhyming magic. He's like a Filipino Dumbledore. That's... <laughs> Harry Potter. That's rhyming at his essence. So insightful, such invention. I mean, I've never heard anyone use I got wobble wobble in a sentence. And yet, and yet you rhymed it with whole bottle. Wobble, wobble, so awful, waffle, waffle, and he's so quick to claim the- You know, I got no problem with rappers having silly bars. Because you don't have to be serious and writing to kill with every verse. Sometimes you're going to be silly, or you're going to write a bar that doesn't quite fit up. It, it's a, what matters is what you bring, like in this situation right here, in an actual battle.
He's big in the game, a gangster who hangs with the baddest you've met. Yeah, Looney, so cool, in an old interview, claimed his main inspiration is Alanis Morissette. Yeah, Alanis Morissette. <laughs> really? Is that true? The Canadian pop, pop singer? How fucking gangster can you get? <laughs> he... He heard Jagged Little Pill, found it insightful. He loves that CD, keeps it clutched like a Bible. When he heard a UK artist was coming to fight, all he could think was, I hope it's a Spice Girl. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't listen much to grime or rap or Eminem. Well, sometimes you can. You did listen all the time to Stan. He loves those bits where Dido sang. And don't you think it's funny that you heard a woman singing about mediocre men who try to keep her quiet and the content of her work spurred you on to be the lynch of a whole scene where women don't compete, where they stay silent. I mean, that's a little bit ironic, don't you think? <laughs> and your material on women is so played out and greasy. On top of that, mate, it's so fucking easy. Like, I'll come round to your crib tonight. Your girl, she wants my dick inside her. Afterwards, I'll go home, write a shit review on TripAdvisor. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, I apologize. But that is 90% of what you write. <laughs> don't... T t Filipino time. <laughs> Yo, <clears throat> now, I don't care who you are and what you do, and I didn't understand a single thing you said to me, man, but fuck you too. <laughs> you see, researching for this British cunt wasn't really fun. I typed in the best of Mark Grist, and guess what, bruv? There isn't one. Yo, I tried Googling this bitch, and I felt like I was clicking for ages. And then finally, Mark Grist, after 17 pages. <laughs> another desperate, aging, irrelevant, nameless beggar with elephantiasis. <laughs> And judging by the melanin and the freckles on his face, you can definitely tell that he's racist. <laughs> I bet you like to touch kids on a regular basis. <laughs> you should be investigated by federal agents for having sexual relations with seventh grade Asians. <laughs> You're a fucking immature asshole who likes fucking immature assholes. <laughs> Pedophile. <laughs> he may look like a decent... <sighs> You're an immature asshole who likes effing immature assholes. You're a pedophile. That was hard. And that was... Oh, my God. Immature. Uh, he's ripping Gris to shreds here. This is this is brutal. You got to give it to Mark Gris, though. He's coming to en enemy territory here in the Philippines. Um, there's obviously... A lot about him that's going to be used as ammunition by Looney, being white, uh, being from the UK, etc., etc. But Looney, man, ah, oh, that bar was disgusting. You're a fucking immature asshole who likes fucking immature assholes. <laughs> Pedophile. He may look like a decent guy, but deep inside, he's got an evil side. The one with a Smeagol smile. Smeagol from Lord of the Rings. My precious. That's right, pedophile. <laughs> now, I want you to be advised that nobody in here cares to understand those European rhymes. And if somebody ever claps or reacts, I won't be surprised, because nine out of 10 is probably just my Filipino peoples being nice. Because your skin is white. You have a face that says, I'm insecure about my penis size. <laughs> I hope the last remaining members of the Beatles die, just so I can see you cry. <laughs> this fucking white geek is in trouble. When I beast, your live feed in the jungle where I eat. If you wanted more views, you should have doubled my fee. But you'll never reach the likes of someone like me, faggot. Double entendre. You never reach the of someone. You never reach the likes of someone like me. Likes on the internet. If you wanted more views, you should have doubled my fee. Ah. Yeah. <clears throat> Go on. Um. 
Okay, before I start, seriously, Eric, thanks a lot, man. You really hooked me up. Now, Eric here gets a ton of love. Comes to you, though, not so much. A lot of the battlers hate him. They always say the same things. He's greedy, hates this scene, and he won't do shit if you don't pay him. If you ain't got cash, you're blown off. He's all about his own costs. At first, I figured, well, so what? Like, he clearly needs a nose job. But they took me to one side and more reports start coming through. You're slipping on your tightrope, no safety net, you're falling through. You want rescuing? These guys won't because each of them is bored of you, cheating for those high notes like your Britney Spears' auto-tune. You... Mm, cheating for those high, no high notes like your Britney Spears' auto-tune. Cheating for those high notes, high bank notes. No safety net, you're falling through. You want rescuing? These guys won't, because each of them is bored of you. Cheating for those high notes, like your Britney Spears' auto-tune. You backstabbing, cash grabbing, sack of crap, or gas and branding. Anyone wanted actual help? He wouldn't do a damn thing. He cheats and lies, he really likes to see how fucked you are. The king of rhyme, nah, Lion King, and it's clear you- The king of rhyme, no, Lion King. <laughs> Anyone wanted actual help, he wouldn't do a damn thing. He cheats and lies, he really likes to see how fucked you are. The king of rhyme, nah, Lion King, and it's clear your uncle Scar. And the first... Oh, the king of rhyme, no Lion King. Lion King, backstabbing, lion, cheating, king. And it's clear that your uncle Scar in that scenario... You're throwing Mufasa off the cliff. Wouldn't do a damn thing. Snake. He cheats and lies. He really likes to see how fucked you are. The king of rhyme. Nah, Lion King. And it's clear your uncle Scar. And the first... First time it all went his way, he packed up his bags and toured around the States. And so, yeah, it turns out your tour wasn't great. I mean, how many was it? Like... Four people came. I mean, uh, no lying, no porkies today. That's why they ain't asked you to tour it again. They paid for your comforts, and look how you thank them. The money he makes investing in abandoning all of you guys for gold wigs and handguns. He keeps facing West like a compass that's stamped on. It's all Western artists, he says, that inspired him. It's all Western references inside your writing. You don't like this country, these people? That's fine, but that is the truth, boy. Why try and deny it? Ra so now he's sort of turning that cultural ammunition that Looney used against Mark Grist back on him. You know, he's being white, he's racist, all of this stuff. Um, the pedophile lines, uh, the inadequacy lines. Um, man. Yeah, the, Mark Grist, man. It's, on. it's all Western artists, he says, that inspired him. It's all Western references inside your writing. You don't like this country, these people? That's fine, but that is the truth, boy. Why try and deny it? Round here, while well, they struggle for food on the street, he's at Trump Tower, reduced to his knees, guzzling, suckling, refusing to eat till Donald Trump's pubes are removed from his teeth. <laughs> uh, that was ridiculous. Pretty hilarious, though. You're on, he's on his knees at Trump Tower. <laughs> what the hell? Suckling, refusing to eat till Donald boy. Trump's pubes are removed from his teeth. <laughs> Ain't got no balls. Ain't got no courage. Mm. He saw all the suffering, just figured, fuck it. One sniff from the West, just watch him go running. I won't be surprised if you hide in my luggage. I'm finished. <laughs> I'm finished with this kid who sees my passport. So they both sort of attack each other's perceived insecurities so now he's going after looney saying like you know all of his influences he's like obsessed with the western rappers uh all of the references in his songs and stuff are about these western artists and he just has his eyes set on getting to the west and becoming famous as a rap artist um in a western setting and uh man looney went after grist for his uh insecurities inadequacies being white um, kind of racist, really, but... <laughs> as a thing of dreams. He'd pack up all his things and leave, ignoring what's here in the scene. I mean, loony, mate. You're killing me. It's a symphony, such history. The love and warmth is in these streets. I mean it, mate. I don't want to leave. I fucking love the Philippines. Whoa. This gig's been dope. I don't want to go, but it's time to bring this thing to close. If you're smart, you'll know how the multi goes. Putang in a mole. <laughs> I didn't catch that. I didn't catch what he said. I didn't. Let's see. It was Putang in a mole. <laughs> Yo. 
that pathetic piece of performance art didn't move me at all like the royal guard. I killed him in 90 seconds like a poisonous dart. I ain't got no problems talking to Mark. He's like a prostitute in Lunetta. Just another walk in the park. <laughs> it's pretty awkward, eh? I don't know what to So there's some of the references that are um, regional specific that, like I didn't get that Lunetta one. Sigh, but I guess standing in front of you makes me want to talk this way. <laughs> Don't flop all day. <laughs> that little league's whack. The accent thing, it was funny at first, but yeah, move on. That's why he's here in the Philippines trying to make his mark on the Philippine map with his Mr. Bean swag. <laughs> I'm the president. The Punisher's bringing the guillotine back. You're about to fade away like that skinny jean fad. This mismatch is a mishap. I'm fade away, fade away jean, skinny jean fad. Mm. <laughs> Looney is definitely has the wordplay, man. I'm the president. The Punisher's bringing the guillotine back. You're about to fade away like that skinny jean fad. This mismatch is a mishap. I'm predicting this will be bad. Kind of like Duterte's middle finger against the British Queen's twat. <laughs> now uh. Duterte. It's pretty obvious that I'm about to body this faggot ass battle rap hobbyist with action Bronson tits. <laughs> You're way past your point. Action Bronson tits. Rap hobbyist with action Bronson tits. <laughs> You're way past your prime, but still you're an optimist. Stop it, Grist. You're older than a floppy disk. <laughs> floppy disks back way before CDs. The first sort of CD data uh, holders, but I don't know. Going after somebody from their age, like going after somebody's age, I don't know if that's fair. Because like, who cares really? Who cares how old you are? But it's funny. There's still some funny lines. Stop it, Grist! You're older than a floppy disk. <laughs> you you got beat by definition and a fucking retard. That makes you the perfect definition of a fucking retard. <laughs> Now I know that nobody that nice. in here gets it, and I respect it. But accepting this battle was a big mistake, and he regrets it like Brexit. Whoa. Now check it, I'm a legend. They refer to me as Alamat. I'm about to crush this ginger and turn him into Salabat. Whoa. That was hard, Salabat. Whoa. Now check it, I'm a legend. They refer to me as Alamat. I'm about to crush this ginger and turn him into Salabat. <laughs> but for my final bars, I have a different battle plan. <laughs> I will use my Jollibee call center accent so everyone can understand. Shout out Jollibee. Love the chicken joy. And those breakfast sandwiches. They, you know, I'd go there every morning, get a couple breakfast sandwiches. Very, very tasty. I love like that syrupy bacon. It's excellent. So, shout out to Jollibee. Looney, I don't know, he's definitely bringing this to a close. Pretty satisfying um, and pretty hard. But for my final bars, I have a different battle plan. <laughs> I will use my Jollibee call center accent so everyone can understand. <laughs> I'm here to leave a lasting impression on Mark like a cattle brand. Break Ooh. his heart like a tan. I'm here to leave a lasting, on lasting impression on Mark like a cattle brand. Mmm. Use my Jollibee call center accent. Cattle brand, lasting impression. Psh. So everyone can understand. <laughs> I'm here to leave a lasting impression on Mark like a cattle brand. Break his heart like a thunder fan, because I'm teacher's enemy, number one. <laughs> Tagalog or English, I'm flexible like a rubber band. You want to mortal combat with me, Mr. Russell Brand? I'm like Goro with the four arms. I got the upper hand. <laughs> now this. This verse, the scheme, I'm like girl with the four hands, I got the upper hand on you. Oh, with that the was four fire. arms, that was I fire. got the that upper was nice. hand. <laughs> <laughs> now this is something that you cannot extinguish. It's gruesome when I depict this, and you cannot distinguish. Do you know what else rhymes with distinguish? Extinguish, relinquish, chakapukin ang ina yung mga British na ubusan ako ng English! <laughs> Ko na lang. Yeah! 
Tatagalugin ko na lang? Tatagalugin ko na lang para sa kapakanan ng mga tulad ni Badang. I don't know what he said. Damn it. Ikaw, ikaw, Boy Tisoy, i-Google mo na lang. I don't know what he's saying. So I can't comment on it. Mas masarap pag Tagalog kasi mas maangas pag rekta. Speaking Tagalog. Panakawang ka sana ng mga bag at maleta sa may araneta at masagasaan ka sana sa kalsada sa EDSA. I heard baggage. I heard maleta. Ito na ba yung pinadala nilang panlaban sa gera? Wala namang kwenta. Isa ka namang napakalaking sagabal, punyeta. Huwag ka nang umasa pa repa tapos na ang karera, di ka na makakabuelta. Hindi mo alam, umuwi ka na lang. Salamat sa pera. It's uh, supposed to be a competition, you know. They have a camaraderie. During the competition, during the battle, they're at each other's throats. Like you're trying to attack as best you can. But in a very, you know, mathematical, uh, precise way, like a surgeon. The microphone is like the surgeon's blade. And you're just trying to beat the other guy. It's a competition. And when the game's over, some sportsmanship there between competitors. Um, it can, some, uh, some congratulations to each other. That's cool. Some problems. And I worked the crowd. I did get the crowd. They were on side. That I was think Mooney right. took it, but it was close. I came out here it was close, man. to learn about what, what battling's all about here and see if I could be accepted, you know, from being out of town doing my thing against the top of the roster. I'm stoked, man. Mark did really well, bro, I, more than I expected. It was really a big adjustment, and that's props to him. That Alanis Morris set line, was, that was very good, bro. <laughs> Without everything you, you, hey, you said. And you, I love the, the camaraderie and the... You, you talked me through. I honestly, I would have really struggled. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, it's not like I fucking wrote your bars for you, so... <laughs> I'd like to give myself more credit for for giving him the advice about the pacing, because I feel like he really nailed it. I'm glad that the happy and zone and stuff worked. Man, <laughs> I don't know, that wasn't funny, you know. <laughs> I thought he, he meant it for Looney, right? And then you know, I was like, oh, okay, okay, you're actually... You're, that was meant for me, all right, I get it. Like, <laughs> man. That motherfucker. It was fucking Give sick. Me hug, yeah, man. man. Like, um, fucking cheers, man. All right. Looks like we're done. Um, thank you everybody for watching. That was interesting. And we got some trikes in the background. Any uh, jeeps, jeep knees around. Um, yeah, that was cool. It was cool, man. I don't usually watch battle raps anymore. Very often, um, I'm more into the music. Battle raps obviously are just apicella, apicella, acapella. <laughs> I'm dyslexic today. Uh, acapella battles. You know, it's two MCs going into an arena. Each one of them has a sword in the form of a microphone, and they do battle. They do swordsmanship. They uh, have sportsmanship. I liked seeing that at the end of the battle that they have a level of camaraderie and respect. Uh, for their craft and for what they do and for that scene the battle rap scene I didn't know that it was so popular in the Philippines uh, I, I think it's still underground it's still one of the last remaining underground uh, versions of hip-hop that it's it's got its own little tight-knit sort of community and there is the similar type of platform here in Canada called King of the Dot you should go check out their channel sometime they have some some really, really amazing artists featured on there too. So, anyways, yeah. It's a rap battle. Um, it's cool. We'll see you all soon. Peace out. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.